How's it going guys? Welcome back to this first video on this new channel and this is called Everything QPR. Now basically on this channel I will be uploading pretty much it's kind, of, it's kind of like you can kind of tell in the name everything to do with QPR. A load of different content with QPR such as match day vlogs, uh, reviews, previews, videos like on the players, injury news and all that kind of stuff. And uh, basically I will make a uh, video going more in depth in that but I just wanted to get this video up quickly as the first video for a uh, Nottingham, well, QPR versus Nottingham Forest review of the game. Which finished 5 2, and it was a terrible game from a QPR point of view. Obviously, from a Nottingham Forest point of view, an amazing game, but we ended up losing it 5 2, and it just wasn't the greatest performance ever. So, we'll start off going through the main topics of the game, and it started off a pretty even game, really, up until like the 37th minute before Lee Tomlin got his goal, but we did have a few decent chances before then. Matt Smith, especially, managed to have a header, hit the bar, hit the line, and then the keeper caught it, and then, it were, then obviously the attack had ended. So, we had a great chance there. And then we had another one as well, which was a strike. It just, it just went wide. I've forgotten who it was exactly, but we had another chance as well. It might have been Luke Freeman or Matt Smith. One of them two anyway. But pretty much we had like two chances. Then Nottingham Forest come along with uh, Lee Tomlin. Terrible defender from our point of view. A cross came in from the left. Arc. It was just kind of just like a pass. It wasn't even a cross really. It was just a pass to their player. Completely unmarked. Lee Tomlin managed to put it straight into the near post. Terrible goal to concede overall. Not good enough defending. Didn't put any pressure on Lee Tomlin in the first. Oh no, on the person who crossed it in the first place. And then Lee Tomlin's completely unmarked in the box. So terrible goal to concede. But it was kind of like the story of our season, right? We had the chances to go one 0 up. Could have been a completely different game. Didn't take them chances. Then Nottingham Forest got the other end and score. Then in the second half, again, it was kind of similar to the first half. We just didn't press the ball. Lee Tomlin had the ball. No one wanted to stick a foot in. He then saying he just shot from the edge of the box. Ended up going in the net. And 2-0 uh, down then with 47 minutes. And then we just seemed to collapse. Another goal then. Four minutes later from Joe Lolly. Again, we're not pressing the ball. It's, it was like three goals. Just didn't seem to learn a lesson. None of them we pressed the ball. Wanted to get a block and didn't even try. So uh, that wasn't good enough. 3-0 down after the, first 50, after the first 50 minutes. So not looking good there. We did manage to pull a goal back then with uh, Massimo Luongo from a corner. Matt Smith, I think, won the header. Then it went down to Massimo Luongo who managed to put it in the back of the net. Then uh, uh, Matthew Cash managed to score a goal. Pretty terrible goal to concede again. There was a shot from Nottingham Forest, saved by Alex Smithies, came out to Matthew Cash, and then he managed to get the rebound. So first to the well, he was first to the second ball, and Matthew Cash was none of the QPI defenders were quick enough. So not very good enough there. And then two minutes later, Matt Smith came in with a header on 78 minutes and uh, pulled another goal back. But then in the 90 in the 91st minute, a guy called Brayton managed to score a goal for Nottingham Forest. And just capped off an awful day for us. Yeah, before this game, Nottingham Forest had actually scored just three goals in the last ten games. And then won, like, one match in the last 13. So I was going into this pretty confident. Because our home form hasn't been bad. Our home form has been decent this season. It's just our away form, which has been the problem. And we've had back-to-back -back home, uh, home clean sheets with back-to-back -back home wins as well. So I was going into this relatively confident with, uh, with Nottingham Forest out of form. And us not really in form, but just kind of, like, get picking up a few wins here and there. So, uh... It was. It just wasn't what I was expecting. It. I was kind of expecting like a low-scoring game, maybe like a one-one or a two-one or something. And uh, in the end, there were seven goals, and we conceded five of them, which was absolutely terrible. I was not expecting that at all. Overall, defensively, we were shocking. Nader Manua wasn't at it at all. Who I think's been all right recently. Then uh, Jack Robinson as well. Maybe got put, put put back in from injury too soon. I think maybe, but he wasn't good enough this game anyway. Jake Bidwell, no, not really been in form at all. To be honest, he wasn't good enough. And just uh, Joel Lynch did end up going off injured after like 50 minutes. But overall, the defence was not good enough. I thought we played the wrong system going into the game. We got completely found out playing the three at the back formation or five at the back. I think that formation really doesn't work. Bidwell is not a wing back, to be honest. Pavel Shoah is not a wing back. And then I think, well, Robinson, is, he's, he's been playing really well at centre back, but then his main position as well is actually a left back. So even in the second half, like, we changed our system and apparently, like, Luke Freeman went to play at left back, which. He's our most creative player and he's playing in left back. I don't understand really why Holloway decided to do that, to be honest. He did end up managing to get himself an assist, to be fair, Freeman did for his cross to Smith. But yeah, I just think Luke Freeman playing as a left back is a bit of a joke, really. He's an attacking midfielder or just centre midfielder. Probably our most creative player on the pitch. And I don't really know why he's, why he's playing in left back, to be honest with you. So yeah, overall, it was a terrible game for us. It could have been completely different if we had taken our chances at the start. But that's kind of what's been happening all season. But I definitely wasn't expecting us to concede five. Yeah, we just need to go back and then just look back on that and just see how terrible it was and hopefully learn our lessons. But doesn't really seem to happen. It happens so many times with this. We, we just do the exact same thing. It happened against, say, like, Wolves pretty much. We lost 2-1. Uh, we, 
We started off with the five at the back, went to the four at the back, and we started playing well. Then it was the same again at Sheffield United. Holloway said he learned his lessons. Then he goes and plays literally the exact same team against Sheffield United as he did against Wolves. And it was a terrible performance against Nottingham Forest here. A lot of people are thinking that Ian Holloway should get sacked. In my opinion, I don't think we should sack him at this stage, really. We've got, we're have got we getting towards the end of the season. We are pretty safe at the moment. 39 points. We're 9 points clear of the relegation zone. If we do get dragged into that relegation battle, then it would be a nightmare. But I'd expect if we get, like, two more wins, maybe with a couple of draws in there as well, out there, like the remaining 12 or 13 games, then I think we should be pretty safe. And I would maybe look, in my opinion, anyway, I would look to maybe bring in a new manager. I don't think Tony Fernandes will do that just because... Uh, Holloway's still got another year left on his contract, and I reckon he'll see out that year at least. But that, that, that's just my opinion. I think Holloway should probably stick in the job to at least till the end of this season, really. But this is pretty worrying signs, to be honest. Like we've been doing well in these like six pointers, really. We've had uh, well, again, especially against like, the teams at the bottom. Like we've beaten uh, Birmingham when we beat them two one. We've beaten Burton another six pointer. Then we're beating uh, uh, Barnsley and then Bolton as well. So we have been winning our, 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 the games against the teams around us, which is the most important thing. So I was kind of confident going into this one. But overall, terrible, terrible performance. And wasn't good enough, wasn't expecting it at all. And uh, just really worried for the future. Now, that does worry me a lot because we've got Aston Villa away coming up next and then Derby. So we've got a difficult next two games. Aston Villa away is going to be tough. And if we're going to concede five to Nottingham Forest at home, I'm really not looking forward to Aston Villa. That will be a game that I'm actually going to as well. So I'm just hoping that we can maybe be, get a bit lucky, maybe can nick a draw or something. But I'm hoping out of this, out of these next two games against Derby and uh, Aston Villa, we can maybe just pick up a surprise result, maybe just pick up one a uh, draw or one win or something, and then look to this game against Sunderland. This home fixture against Sunderland is a must-win game because obviously Sunderland are right at the bottom. We'll be expected to win that. Hopefully, we can get the win in that one. Then we should be pretty safe. But yeah, if we do lose these next two games, then. We are definitely looking over our shoulder. It just depends on what the relegate, well, what the teams down at the bottom below us do actually do. Just because um, if, if they if they start picking up a lot of points in these next two games, I like, get like th three or four points each. Then we're definitely starting to look, uh, 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 we're starting to look over our shoulders so after these uh, two games against Derby and Aston Villa. Then that Sunderland game will be a must win. I'm, it's it's going to be a must win either way, just to get, just to keep us above that relegation battle. Because right now I think it's some like Reading downwards on 34 points. It kind of it's kind of been uh, kind of looks like it's them teams, and then there's a bit of a gap between the rest. So I think it should be from them downwards. Hopefully we can just pick up the win. Uh, get we'll get to this like 45, 50 point mark as quick as we possibly can. Then uh, we can play some better football. Hopefully a lot of fans have been complaining about the football we've been playing as well. With us obviously just playing long ball a lot. Really like whenever we get closed down, I just think we always seem to panic and just smack it long up to Matt Smith, which obviously that's a, that's a decent thing having a big striker there. To, so, so at least he's there. If we manage to hit him, then he can win a header. But it's it's a, not a great way of playing. That's the way that Holloway plays, really. And I'm not expecting to change anytime soon. Fans will be complaining, obviously, with it. But we can't really do much about it. We've played a few, like, against, like, Bolton. I thought we played some nice football, but then we were up against 10 men. Bolton weren't really pressing the ball as much. But then when we're away from home against, like, Sheffield United Wolves, they press the ball so well, and we really just can't seem to deal with that. We always go long, and that's why we struggle in them away games so much. But... Anyway, guys, uh, QPR fans, do let me know what you think of this in the comment section down below. If there are any Nottingham Forest fans watching as well, they did play very well in that game, to be fair. And uh, completely, uh, they completely mugged us off again. We, we lost them 4-0 earlier in the season and lost them 5-2. So we've considered 9 goals against Nottingham Forest this season. So yeah, both fans, let me know what you thought of the game in the comment section down below. Hopefully both the teams uh, will be able to survive quite comfortably. That would be decent. We're kind of expecting that at the moment. The way we're both on a similar amount of points, 39 and 40 points. So hopefully we can both just pull away from that relegation zone and uh, then we'll hopefully be able to play some better football. For, for our, from our point of view anyway, we'll be able to be playing better football for the rest of the season. So keep your fans, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of that. Subscribe down below as well if you are new and especially if you are a QPR fan, do subscribe. I'll have a lot of content around QPR in the future. Such as uh, I will be uploading match day vlogs when I do go to the games. I'm planning on going to, out of the next few games anyway. I will be going to Aston Villa away and then I'll be going to the Sunderland game at home as well. So anyway guys, drop a like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.